Welcome to Weasel Jog Gaming, and today we're going to be looking at tactics for the uh, Sun and Moon Unified Minds Soaring Storm theme deck. Um, this one features, of course, Dragonite. Uh, this is a great deck. This is a deck that still holds up well into the, the short Sword and Shield era. Um, it's been a super powerful deck for a while. It's got some neat tricks. It's a really interesting deck. Um, it's a fun one to play for sure. So, of course, we want to consider what kind of energy we have. Being Sun and Moon, we do have 20 energy. It's kind of an odd set though. Um, there is 11 lightning and nine water. Now, that's really interesting because there are no water Pokemon in here. You do have a dragon type, dragon a dragon type dragonite who is a lightning and water type so that's why you have that energy um, so we'll get right into our pokemon of course and the first thing we want to be looking at is our starters who do we want to be pulling right at the start of the game who do we want to be putting in that active spot right at the start and to start off with um, the best choice out there is the alolan grimer this is a great Pokemon to start with, has so many advantages for a starter, it's not even funny. He's got 80 hit points, which is pretty high for a basic kind of starter Pokemon. The only uh, dark type in your deck, that's not really important, he's not going to be a damage dealer for you. The main reason he's so wonderful is the no energy collect that allows you to draw two cards. That's right, Alolan Grimer allows you to draw two cards without any energy. That allows you to start putting energy on your benched stuff. He does have a sludge bomb attack for 30 damage, but that's really weak. It takes a lot of energy to use it. Not a great combination. The one downside to Alolan Grimer, though, is the fact that he has a two energy retreat cost, which means once you're done setting things up on your bench, you really need to use one of your two switch options to get him out of there. Otherwise, you got to throw two energy on him just to retreat him. Your other hope is you just leave him out there long enough for your enemy, your opposing player, to knock him out for you. So those are your options there. Another solid starter is Pidgey. Pidgey has 50 hit points as a colorless type. Uh, flying type too, so the weakness is lightning. Has a one energy collect that allows you to draw a card. Obviously not as good as a low and Grimer's no energy draw two, but it's still a draw. So it's kind of your secondary choice. You have three Pidgeys in the deck, two Alolan Grimers. So you kind of hope for those from the start. Next up, and I wouldn't usually do this in a deck, but these two are so instrumental to this deck and they are so powerful and they are powerful from start to end. They're just great. Thunderous and Tornadus. If you have both of these in your hand, starting out with Thunderous is not a bad play. You do have to get that second energy on, so it's going to be the second turn before you get to do anything with him. But then you can come out hitting for 70 damage on turn two. And on top of that, it's on a Pokemon that has 120 health. And one more energy, you can start doing Raging Thunder. Now, if you're lucky enough to get some other things rolling and you can get Tornadus up and going with his three energy that he needs, then you can swap them really easy because they have really low retreat costs. So you can swap Thunderous out from his early attacks to put Tornadus in, who can then do 80 damage plus 20 to everything on their bench. It's a really potent combo that is very important to this entire deck. Um, but they can play early on if you have both of them. So that's it for our starters. It's time to talk about our defense. And there really isn't a lot of defense in this deck and it's all kind of not, a, not straight up defense, more kind of manipulative defense. Um, Pidgeot. Pidgeot is not gonna see a lot of play time in this deck, but Due to his attacks, he makes an okay desperation move to kind of delay the enemy. Um, Pidgeot has that whirlwind attack 
which does 60 damage and forces the enemy to switch their active Pokemon. If they only have one good power Pokemon and he's in the active spot, Whirlwind's an okay response to that. The three energy Spin Storm is kind of interesting too. Your opponent puts their active Pokemon and all cards attached to it into their hand. So if you're talking a large scale Pokemon that you know is a stage two, so it's three cards right there, and it takes three or four energy to start doing what it needs to be doing, you stick that all back in their hand, it's going to take them three or more rounds to get that back on the bench and active and ready to go. So in a situation where you have um, you know, Pidgeot that you've evolved into a Pidgeotto and you have extra energy that you don't need, which is going to be few and far between, but in the scenario where you do have that kind of extra energy, putting energy on Pidgeotto to keep Pidgeot around for that kind of response is not recommended, but is a possible use of your cards. It's just an option you need to know about it. Not something I would plan for or be working towards, but can come in handy. That's really it for defense. Um, so then we're going right into our... Oh, sorry. We do have one other card for defense. And that's Dragonair. You have three Dragonairs in the deck. You only have one Pidgeot. Dragonair has a four energy destructive whirlpool attack. Um, it does 70 damage and you discard an energy from your opponent's active Pokemon. Again, this is not something I would recommend using or building to or making part of your strategy. I just want you to know that it's there. That destructive whirlpool is not bad damage wise. Um, Dragonair has 100 health, but it's a four energy attack. Now, you're going to need 4 energy on your Dragonite anyways, so it's not a big deal if you stack some energy on Dragonair. But you don't really want to risk Dragonair out there just to do a 70 damage attack and remove one of their energy. Um, again, that's going to be a desperation kind of situation. So now on to our power players. And there's two of them that we've already talked about, and that's Thunders and Tornadus. And these guys are great. Basic Pokemons, 120 health, decent attacks. Um, Tornadus on the right there has a 1 energy Knuckle Punch for 20 damage. Not very impressive. His 3 energy Thunderous Tornado, though, does 80 damage to the active Pokemon. And if you have Thunderous, the partner Pokemon, on your bench, it does 20 damage to all of your opponent's benched Pokemon. That is huge. If they have a full bench, you're slapping down 100 points of damage. And you're weakening any Pokemon they bring in later. If you can get that off two, maybe even three times during a match, it's huge. Because that can knock out guys on the bench. Um, also great to pull that out if they retreat someone from the active spot to try to keep them alive. Then you come along and do that tornado and knock them out. Um, so very powerful options there. Thunderous has 120 health, is a lightning type, whereas Tornadoes is a colorless type. Thunderous has Thunderous Gale, which does, for 2 energy, 20 damage, plus, if Tornadus is on the bench, 50 more. So 70 damage if you have both of them there. Raging Thunder is a little more impressive, although there is a downside. For 3 energy, you can do 120 damage, but this attack does 40 damage to one of your benched Pokemon. Now that's not necessarily a gigantic deal, because you're probably going to have a couple key figures on your bench anyways that are working a very specific strategy for you. So you can absorb one, two, maybe even three of those hits as the game goes along. And to do that, to do that 120 damage, it's honestly worth it. So you're going to be taking those kind of hits a lot anyways. So keep those in mind. Those are great cards. You have two of each in the deck, which is a lot of power to work with. They're not our only power cards, though. We also have Lantern, who evolves from Chinchou. Chinchou is not very impressive. A basic Pokemon, 60 health, lightning type, 1 energy pound for 10 damage, and a 2 energy spark that does 10 damage to the active Pokemon and 10 damage to 2 Pokemon on the bench. 
that second attack, that spark attack, is not bad. Um, but two energy on a 60 health basic, and you're only going to be doing a total of 30 damage out there, and it's spread across three Pokemon, it's not worth the risk to have them out there. Lantern, however, is awesome. 110 health, lightning type. Um, has a three energy lightning strike. That does 70 damage, plus you may discard all the energy from this Pokemon. And if you do this attack, it does 70 more damage. So you're doing 70 damage right out of the gate. Plus, if you discard all your energy, you can bump that up to 140, which is significant. That's going to knock out all but the highest tier health and defensive Pokemon. So Lantern is very powerful. What makes him even better is the ability, Energy Grounding. When one of your Pokemon is knocked out by damage from an opponent's attack, you may move a basic energy card from that Pokemon to this Pokemon. So that means when you have Thunderous, Tornadus, someone else out on your, your bench, or I mean in your active spot, and that Pokemon gets knocked out, one of those energies, instead of going to your discard pile, is preserved onto Lantern. So Lantern has this really nice way of you just stick him on your bench and he slowly powers himself up. You don't have to put energy on him. You're going to lose a couple Pokemon and that energy is going to get siphoned over to Lantern and just make him more powerful. Then once he's pulled three energy from three down Pokemon, you bring him out there and he just puts the smack down for 140 damage. Then you pull him back off your front line again. Or if you lose him, it's not a big deal. You hopefully have someone else to back him up. So Lantern is a big part of your damage in this deck. Also, and the nice part is you don't necessarily have to power him up yourself. Then we come to our biggest hitter, and he is a big, big hitter. First, we'll look at the lower evolutionary forms. Dratini is a dragon type with 60 health. Has an Aqua Lift ability that if you have any water energy attached to him, he has no retreat cost. And has a 2 energy jump on attack for 10 damage, plus flip a coin for up to 30 more. Not very impressive. Not someone you want to use as a starter. Um, not someone I would really be using as himself. Dragonair, the evolved for version, um, is a stage 1. Has 100 health, dragon type again. One energy tail whip for 20 damage, very weak. Four energy destructive whirlpool for 70 damage is a little more impressive. Again, it discards an energy from the enemy active Pokemon. However, I really wouldn't be using a lot of Dragonairs out there either, except for Desperation. And the main reason is you need these guys to stay alive so that you can get to Dragonite. You have three Dratinis, three Dragonairs, and you have two Dragonites. Dragonite is huge. Very powerful Pokemon, can do a lot of damage, but the ability is even more impressive. And so the combination of a great ability and huge damage is what really makes Dra Dragonite shine. Dragonite is a dragon type, obviously. Has 160 health, which is huge. That's on that higher end of the health spectrum. Has a 4 energy dragon impact attack that does 170 damage which is up there to the point where it's almost enough to knock out anything you're going to see in theme play. There's only a couple Pokemon that are going to survive that attack. If you're facing those things, you want to do that damage with one of your other Pokemon and then bring Dragonite in to finish them off. Um, but the nice part is you only need to do you know, 10, 20, 30, 40 damage with something else before bringing Dragonite in to finish them because that 170 damage is huge. The downside of Dragon Impact is that you have to discard three energy from this Pokemon. So that is a huge energy drain. You're going to be spending a lot of energy to keep Dragonite moving. Now, he has a neat ability though, Hurricane Charge. Once during your turn, before your attack, you may attach a Water Energy and a Lightning Energy card, or one of each, uh, from your hand to your Pokemon in any way you like. So what that means is Dragonite can power himself up for a huge attack next turn. So you do Dragon Impact, you discard three energy, 
Then what happens is on your next turn, you can play an energy from your hand, and then you can do Hurricane Charge to play two more energy from your hand, and you can put those three energy back from your hand onto Dragonite, so that Dragonite can do another 170 damage attack. Now, that's expensive. Very, very expensive for an attack to keep throwing away three energy. But this deck is fairly energy efficient in other ways, so you can get away with doing it as long as you are aware of what's going on. You cannot knock out the entire enemy force using just Dragonite alone. You're going to drain way too much energy. It's just not going to be feasible. But Dragonite is a big heavy hitter to pull in to knock out those key Pokemon and then, you know, use that Hurricane Charge to keep himself going for a little while. Hurricane Charge can also be used from the bench to power up other bench Pokemon or your active Pokemon. So it's a great way to get Thunderous or Tornadus up to par so that they can attack. Um, don't forget that you do have two Dragonites, so in a possibility where you could use both, that's something you can do. And um, again, that Hurricane Charge can be used with Lantern to get that energy back onto Lantern so that they can do the 140 damage attack. So. Hurricane Charge has a lot of flexibility in how you can use it in this deck. Next up, we want to talk about just our, our utility Pokemon. So, the remaining Pokemon we have left to talk about. Now, we have already talked about Pidgey a little bit. And the reason we're bringing him back out is because he's the lower evolutionary form of Pidgeotto. Pidgeotto is a very important part of this deck. And you're going to want to try to get at least one, if not two, Pidgeottos on your bench. Pidgeotto works well for absorbing that extra damage from Thunderous, but more importantly, Pidgeotto has an ability called Airmail. Airmail allows you once during your turn, before your attack, you may look at the top two cards of your deck, put one of them into your hand, and put the other card at the bottom of your deck. This is a great way to just keep cycling through your deck. If you have two Pidgeottos on your, on your bench, you're going to be pulling four cards Keeping two of them, two of them go to the bottom. And you're thinking, oh no, i got to bury two cards. Well, with Pidgeotto's Airmail, you're going to be cycling those back up through your deck as you put more and more stuff below them. So this is a great way to make sure you have the energy you need in your hand to support Dragonite um, or to power up other Pokemon. Or it's a great way to cycle through that deck and find those evolutionaries or those basic Pokemon that you need to really get things moving or to find other key supporters that you might need. So Pidgeotto is great. And if you can get two of these on your bench, that's amazing. That's a lot of power. So that's it for our Pokemon. Um, a lot of big heavy hitters. A lot of big heavy hitters. Some decent starters. Really not much for defense, but some powerful utility cards. So you do have some really interesting Pokemon to use here and a good spread across everything with a lot of power, some good starters, a little bit of utility. So now on to our supporter cards. And as always, we're going to start with our draws. So first up, we have two Hows. How allows you to draw three cards. Nice, simple, easy, basic card to understand. Next up, we have two Bug Catchers. Bug Catcher allows you to draw two cards. Flip a coin for a 50-50 chance at pulling two more coins. Um, if I had a choice between the two, I would always go with How because I know I'm going to get three. Uh, but Bug Catcher is a nice secondary pull. Also for draws, we have Lily. Lily's a little bit different. Um, Lily allows you to draw cards until you have six in your hand, or if it's the first turn, until you have eight in your hand. So... Um, with the good starters you have and with Lily, going second with this deck isn't bad. Um, you can actually do some interesting stuff that way. But Lily is a, is a great draw card, especially when you're running your hand down quite a bit. Lily can fill it back up for you. This deck also has two Cynthia's. Cynthia is a great supporter, very powerful. Allows you to shuffle your hand into your deck and then draw six more cards. You're not discarding anything. You're shuffling your hand back into the deck and drawing six cards. This is a great way if you have some cards in your hand, you don't want to get rid of them, but they're not useful right now, but there's other stuff in your deck you'd like. 
send your hand back into your deck, draw more cards, recycle what you have and see if you can't find something better. To that end, we also have a Tate and Lisa, which allow you to choose one of two abilities. Um, the first one is shuffling your hand into your deck and then drawing five cards. So kind of a weaker form of Cynthia. Um, still very good card, very powerful. Has a secondary effect that we'll talk about a little bit later. Next up is pulling Pokemon. We don't have a lot of options here, but we have some great options for this deck. We have two Pokemon fan clubs. Pokemon Fan Club allows you to search your deck for up to two basic Pokemon, reveal them, and put them in your hand, then shuffle your deck. Um, a lot of times, Pokemon Fan Club isn't overly useful. Uh, the, the basics that you have in your deck really are not game changers. Um, it's best used for some kind of support card, um, or to, you know, you have the later evolutionary stages, so you want to use Pokemon Fan Club to get the basic level out there so you can start evolving. In this deck though, Pokemon Fan Club is a great way to stock up on your Thunderous and Tornadus. Those are two huge damage dealers that you have in your deck and Pokemon Fan Club can pull those. With four of those great basics, that's what you're going to be using that Pokemon Fan Club for a lot. On the other end of the spectrum we have Pokemon Communication. This allows you to reveal a Pokemon from your hand, put it back into your deck, Search your deck for a Pokemon, reveal it, uh, put that in your hand, and then shuffle your deck. This card is specifically going to be used to build up your Dragonite. So if you have Dragonite in your hand, or you have Dratini on the deck, and you have Dragonair in your hand, um, you're going to use Pokemon Communication to trade something in to get your missing Dragonite Evolutionary Stage. Um, you need to get Dragonite on your deck. That's a huge damage dealer. His ability is very useful. So that's where Pokemon Communication is going to be used. I would definitely be trying to save Pokemon Communication just to get Dragonite going. That's what you want to use that for. That's it for pulling Pokemon. And we don't have any Pokemon in the deck that do anything. Um, you know, Unlike with drawing where you have Grimer and Pidgey and Pidgeotto, there are no pulling Pokemon abilities on any of your Pokemon. So you are a little bit limited there. Now on to energy. And as we know, we're gonna be dumping a lot of energy in this deck. Um, we're gonna be dumping three energy from every time that Dragonite attacks. We're gonna be dumping three energy from um, our uh, Lantern when we do our big attack. So you're gonna need to be getting that energy back. And Fisherman does that. Fisherman allows you to pull four basic energy cards from your discard pile back into your hand. So that instantly restocks that energy that you just discarded last turn. Um, Fisherman's very powerful, very useful for this deck. Do not forget about it. Energy Recycle System is another useful one. It allows you to make a choice between two abilities. Either putting a basic energy card from your discard pile into your hand, or shuffling three basic energy cards from your discard pile back into your deck. More often than not, I'm gonna go with that second option of recovering three energy from the discard into the deck. The reason is I'm gonna hope that I have Pidgeots on my bench and they can really start cycling stuff. There's a lot of draw cards in here that allow me to cycle stuff. So hopefully by putting those back in the deck, I'm gonna be able to pull them again fairly quickly. Um, the first option, though, is an option if you're desperate, you really need one energy right now so that you can get Dragonite back up and powered so that you can do another attack. So those are really it for energy. Keep in mind that Lantern, of course, absorbs energy from your knocked out Pokemon, but Dragonite and Lantern are going to be spending a lot of that energy. So while you, you do have a lot of neat things you can do positively with energy, you also have a lot of energy drains. For control, we don't have a lot of options. We have one Switch, and we have one Tate and Lisa. Tate and Lisa has a secondary ability that allows you to use them like a Switch. So you effectively have two Switches in the deck. Um, that's probably what I would save Tate and Lisa 
four is that switch ability in case I need it. But in desperation, I will use her to cycle a hand if I desperately need some cards. We have no heals in the deck at all. So that's it. No support heals, no Pokemon heals. So with that, it's time to talk stats. And this one really comes across as kind of looking middle of the road, but is actually more powerful potentially than what the stats show. Its power is a four. Keep in mind that Dragonite can do 170 damage, which is gigantic. Um, on top of that, you have Thunderous and Tornadus that do some good solid damage, and you also have Lantern that can do 140 damage. Now, all of that power has some caveats where you're either taking damage or having to throw away a lot of energy. So, power is nice, but expensive. So, our power ekes up just above a 3 to a 4 there. Speed is how quickly we can get our big heavy hitters out and punching. Um, and we're kind of middle of the road here with a 3. You do have some good options. Um, Thunderous and Tornadoes can kind of start hitting pretty early. Um, Dragonite takes a lot of energy to get moving, but with that Hurricane Charge can apply that energy pretty quickly. So while there is some high energy cost associated with this, it's not hard to get that energy moving fairly early. So our speed's at a 3. Agility is how fast we can get the Pokemon we need onto our bench. Now we don't have a lot of ways to pull the actual Pokemon that we want to use, um, but we have a lot of draws. So we're going to be able to pull a lot of um, just cards through with, with Pidgeots, with draws, um, to cycle that deck to get to the Pokemon we need and want. You just have to keep cycling through that deck all the time to make sure you have a wide variety. Energy efficiency is sitting at a three. Um, and this is kind of a tough one. You do have some interesting ways to use and conserve and, and save energy, but at the same time, you're going to be throwing away a lot of energy. So efficiency is sitting at a three. Um, and that might be a little high even. Complexity of this deck is a three. It's not overly complex, but not straightforward and simple. You're not just building up guys and attacking with them. You have all kinds of different attacks that have different effects. Um, you're going to be throwing away a lot of energy, or you're going to be damaging your own team, or you need to have a combination of certain Pokemon to really make things work, or you have to be recovering that energy so you can keep fighting. Um, or you got to know when to use what draws so that you can keep that energy coming. And you got to make sure you have all those pieces in place. Otherwise, the deck kind of falls apart. Resilience is sitting at a three. Um, no defense, no healing. You do have a fairly decent amount of high health Pokemon, though. So you can take a few hits fairly well. For type advantage, we're sitting at a three. Um, your main types are going to be Dragon, Colorless, and Lightning. You have a lot in each category for doing damage. Now that doesn't give you any big advantages. There's no one with weaknesses really to Dragon. There's no weaknesses to Colorless. There are some weaknesses to Lightning, uh, but not a lot. So you don't have a big advantage. But on the defensive side, you don't have a lot of weaknesses either. You're weak to Fairy, Fighting, and Lightning. But since your damage is spread out pretty evenly amongst your dragon, colorless, and lightning types, you can really kind of work around that. If they're throwing, you know, someone with lightning damage at you, that just means you're not using Tornadus. If they're throwing fighters at you, that just means you're not using Thunderous or Lantern. Um, so you have some really good flexibility there to defend from weaknesses. So type ability is sitting at a three. Manipulation is very low at a 1. Um, basically, you have manipulation with Pidgeot and Dragonair, but it's not something you're going to be really focusing on or trying to use. So, not a lot of manipulation. Um, all in all, this is a, a fun deck. It is a powerful deck. It is an interesting deck. It has a lot of flexibility. Um, you end up moving a lot of things around. It's, it's a very... Um, active deck with a lot of things going on. It is a higher skill deck though because of that. But the payoff is there. 
it is a deck that still competes very strongly against Sword and Shield. Um, it was one of the top decks in Sun and Moon, and it's still one of the top decks now. Um, it's one of the decks that I really hate going up against, unless I have one of my best decks also. So, great deck all around, um, fun deck to play. Dragonite's a very powerful, Soaring Storm's a great theme deck. Uh, thanks for watching. Don't forget to like and subscribe, and I'll see you next time.